What's up guys, Matt Wallen here for 10 years. Uh, I guess today we're gonna run through some of my guitars and my live setup. So uh, I'll start with this guy, which is a 1977, I believe, Les Paul Custom that weighs way too much to really play on stage, but I've continued to do it for about 14 years. I got new uh, Seymour Duncan, a uh, whole lot of humbuckers in here, which is a nice vintage, but still fat kind of tone. I actually picked this up and used this on all of the autumn effect when we were in the studio in Los Angeles and the guy that owned it screwed with me for about two months because I kept wanting to buy it and he's like no no and he knew he was going to sell it to me but he held out for the whole time we were there before being like all right dude you can have it and I guess my claim to fame on uh, this guitar other than it was the autumn effect guitar that I still use is uh, right before we recorded uh, Velvet Revolver was in there and Slash had tried to buy this guitar and he said no because he didn't want to end it up just you know, in a room full of guitars that never gets touched, so. I use the Ernie Ball, not even Slinkies, which I think are 11 to maybe 48. And I do a little bit, you know, a little bit heavier just because we do tune down a little bit. And, you know, you don't have some decently thick strings. And, you know, your shit will be out of tune all night. So, I do that right there with those. This guitar um, is usually tuned uh, everything we do is down half a step. The whole guitar goes down half a step. Then I drop the low string and the high string down to C sharp, which is kind of a, you know, just use, you know, we use a lot of the open tuning. It helps get it, you know, more round, around sound with those kind of chords. Uh, I use this for probably a majority of the songs on this one. Definitely all the stuff that I did. Most of the stuff through Autumn Effect and Division is played in this tuning on, on this guitar. Um, this one is a 1981 Silver Burst. Also too heavy to play. Here's this uh, specially modded back guard of gaff tape, which I don't know why we still do that. But it's been dropped and beaten and dragged around. Uh, I think these might be the original pickups in these still. I don't know, but this one is tuned to what we call wasteland tuning, which is, you know, again, all guitars are down half a step, start off, but then C sharp, and then we actually tune the, the B string up to C sharp, and this one down to C sharp, so it's a very, uh, it was pretty much invented to play the wasteland riff, which is just to give it a little more fullness, and it ended up making its way into a few other songs, because you can... It's just uh, interesting tuning when you start screwing around with it. Uh, I've used that one mainly on Wasteland, some of the stuff from, from Birth to Burial. I, I try to avoid it because I'm not very creative in it. But So I just use it on the few songs that we have written that way. This is the Troy Van Leeuwen Signature Jazz Master, which I've only had for about a year, but I just love. I've always loved Jazz Masters, and I like it's got the inlays up here, you know, matching headstock. Uh, I got kind of tired of playing Les Pauls all the time, so I tried to start sneaking in Fenders on the new record. Um, usually on all my guitars, I keep, you know, everything goes to 10. These ones I have to, just because of my amp settings and they're much brighter, I roll the tone back to about 3 and it keeps it from getting overwhelmingly shrill without having to, you know, dial an amp in the middle of the, the set. But, uh, these, this one I use, uh, Again, down half step, the whole thing. I keep in standard and I just drop this string to C sharp, but sometimes it's just in standard half step down for different songs. Most of the stuff I did on the new record, How I Lived it as Ghost, is I just kept it all standard because that's just the way I've gotten used to playing at home and it's more comfortable for me and I don't have to keep switching guitars all the time. So, But I really love this one and I get to play with the Whammy Bar every once in a while just out of sheer fun for myself. I don't care if anyone else likes it. So On the Jazz Masters, this is one I've had this is an early 90s one. It looks way prettier in your light than I feel like it looks like in most of the, most of the time because it gets that kind of yellowish look. Um, this one is in a tuning which I don't even, let me even look up what tuning this is in. Okay, so we stole at some point on the Division record uh, tuning from Led Zeppelin from the Rain song, which is B, F sharp, B, F sharp, B, C sharp which is how you would play like focus and, and drug of choice and actions and motives. Uh, I think I use a little heavier gauge string on this one. I also have to tune, I keep 
Every once in a while I'll flip this one in the middle with just to get a little fuller, but I also have to keep the toe knob down on this one because it's bright just like the other Jazzmaster. Um, I use a little heavier gauge strings on this one just because we tune it down to B and it's a freaking Jazzmaster, so it's not meant for anything that I'm using it for. But I like this guy, but I really only get him out one or two songs a set. It's, but I do love this guitar and I finally got to use it somewhere on tour. Had it in a closet for about a decade, bring it out on tour for one month and that's what you get. Rock and roll, dings and scratches, but they're meant to be played, right? And that's, I believe, all for the guitars that I keep out on tour. Obviously we have a lot of them, but they're not all mine, so. So these two, these are both my heads. This is actually, both of these are handmade and you can see if we we'll look on the back, they're actually marked to my name and the date they were produced. There's a friend of mine, Drew Foppy, you know, he spells his name with an E, but he calls his amps Pop Stars, and he makes only 15 of each design. So, uh, he's, you know, he generally works, he's out as a tech for the Deftones, he's worked with Fleetwood Mac, I think he's out with Shakira right now. So, I mean, like, I know, like, this head, I'm in the company of, like, Mick Fleetwood and Cheryl Crow, Stefan from the Deftones are a few of the people that own these, and I have, I have this one and another same head, but it's in actually a combo combo situation. But this is just an 18 watt head. Uh, it's got an amazing tremolo channel, it just, and that's something I play at home. It's a little cleaner on this this left side channel, but it's just a tone and a volume knob, and it's got a top cut in the back, and it's you get all your gain from this volume. So we just turn it up here, almost as far as it goes, and it's bright and it cuts and it's full and round. Uh, this one is a 50 watt model and it's jumpable almost like the old old Marshalls which you know I have so I'm getting I'm using both preamps in here uh, this one on the back actually has a switch and there's two or three models of preamp and they work independent of each other right now I've got it set it's basically like a 59 baseman uh, high watt 100 and an old what is it, JTM 66 I'm probably saying that wrong all the gear people are gonna be mad at me uh, an, an old, an old, very old Marshall, but you can just literally toggle through, and we can show you on the back, toggle through, it has completely different tone characteristics, so I kind of, the tone's high on this one, and it's a little more full and thick, meaty thing, so I kind of use it as one big sound, and I run them both always on distortion, full volume at the same time, so I never split them up. This one goes to a one, 112, which is actually hidden in this, just for aesthetic sake, for uh, aesthetic sake of our uh, stage set up. You can see back here where we just cut out. You know, it's got the handmade cab that goes with it, a little open back. You know, we just make it through there. Just, I'd like to uh, have them showcase, but you know, for the sake of the band, we have a look for the whole stage and that's how that is. Uh, the other cab is a 212 silver that matches the head. Uh, we have to keep it back here because it's hot as fuck. You know, so. That one sounds really good. But yes, Fop Star, Drew Foppy, amazing dude. Half the stuff that makes my sound work is that guy and his pedals and the work he does on my guitars and the amps that he builds. So I'm lucky to have him as a friend and this inside the stuff that nobody else can kind of get. Those are basically the amps. I don't know technically more about them. I just turn the shit up until it sounds good or have him dial it in. My pedal board's a pretty simple setup. Uh, this, this, I, like I was saying, I run, I run all, both my amps at the same time, all the time. Full distortion and everything, so what I basically do is, I use this compressor, which is also made by Drew Foppy and Fopstar, and right about here just works as a compressor, you go anywhere past it, it gets a little bit into, uh, drive as well. So I usually keep it just right there, uh, when I do use my Fender guitars, because they're not quite as, uh, high output is the less balls. I will actually rake it up to about here to kind of get the extra balls out of them. But just standard, it sits, sits about right here. And I, I just use this volume pedal, Ernie Ball volume pedal, as basically like a, as a, you know, like a channel switch. Like there's full volume and I've got a, I think a wine cork down here that's just taped, gaff taped over to stop it from going all the way to no sound. And that's just my clean tone. It's just rolling the volume knob all the way back, so. Uh, one weird thing that I, I didn't realize was too weird, um, I do a lot of tap dancing with my pedals and I've been looking for a solution for this for a long time, so 
I ended up stumbling on this Boss line selector. Um, so basically, the guitar comes in the tuner, into the compressor, volume, then this volume pedal will go into the line selector to input, and the output goes directly to the noise suppressor, which then goes to the amps. So up here you got to send and return, so all my actual effects, you know, the TC, TC Electronics flashback, you know, the couple of uh, EHX here and the reverb are all in the send and return. So if I have a tone that has, you know, like these three on, instead of being like, okay, I need to switch this on and this off and this off and this off, I basically can just, say if my clean tone has all these, this is on full dirty, if I step on this, it brings everything in the loop. So if I want clean with effects, I just hit like that and it brings everything into the signal. And then that turns all these off. It just, take, it just cuts them out of the path. So that was kind of my uh, solution to not having to tap dance so much because I can turn things on and off at a separate time from when they need to be on and just bring them all in when I need them. Uh, this noise suppressor is just a good idea because my shit's loud and sometimes it hums depending on the power of the room we're in. Uh, that's about it. Every once in a while I get this Ebo out, which is fun. The song Beautiful I use this on. It's what the very weird high-end slidey thing is, is me getting to play around with some of my toys. But I leave, you know, I've got a general, general delay sound and just general reverb to give it, you know, just a little glass on top of clean parts or stuff like that. But it's pretty simple, I feel like. That's about all, uh, I think I got it. about all I got. It's not a terribly crazy setup. Very analog, very old school, I guess. Thank you guys for the time. Uh, I'd like to see you guys come out and check out the show, hear all this stuff live, hear everybody else's stuff too. Um, in the meanwhile, we just put out a record, How to Live as Ghosts. You can check that out, pick it up anywhere. It's Spotify, Amazon, 10yearsmerch.com. Also, you can get it, some signed copies of vinyl as well. Um, yeah, thanks for the time, and uh, you know, obviously all the other things, Instagram, Facebook, you can find us anywhere, so thanks for watching, and uh, see you soon, hopefully.